Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So, a few things before I start this video. Pay that in the back, no mind. I need to fix my bed, I know. Um, today was just one of those days where I just got up and went about my business because I had to go somewhere this morning, so I just never got a chance to do that um second thing you might hear the heater because it is cold so i have the heater on and third you might hear the alarm um not the alarm the smoke detector going off because i do have my door open yeah i don't feel like getting up to close it but i wanted to do a reading blog for a new book that i'm diving into and it's biblical fiction and i'm super super excited my review for this book is due next week on saturday if i'm not mistaken and i did start i completed chapters one and two and uh, my life um but the book is the last man at the end by r william bennett this is biblical christian fiction historical fiction however you prefer to classify it i say biblical fiction on a guy named simon and him being the last man at the end and the end is basically the place where mary and joseph had gone to right before mary gave birth to our lord and savior and it's this guy coming to the faith um he is a jewish believer but he is one of those believers that use their belief for their convenience. So, um, you know, it's it's so interesting, so relatable. I have been marking up in this book, if you guys can see, writing notes because it's like, okay, so on page eight, there's a thing where it says that Simon was a Jew, but he kept his religion in a manner driven by convenience. He married, um, he's married, he has a wife, he has a baby on the way and everything. And at this portion, this is prior to Joseph and Mary coming to the door to ask about space. So um, it says that uh, he saw no need for the traditions and trappings of his Judaism unless they helped him or his wife insisted he keep them. When traveling, he kept the Sabbath if he was tired, ignored it if he needed to work. He observed the diet if those foods were available, but ate what he wished if they were not or when not at home. They did not seem appealing. He prayed if he... If he had needs, asking for help, he did not bother God when he had control of his situation or needed no divine intervention. And for me, I put, wow, so he's a part-time believer. And I believe a lot of us are like that. We're definitely part-time believers. Every now and then, we use um, our beliefs and faiths for convenience. There are people like um, who are still dabbling in the secular world. And I don't mean, when I say secular world, I don't mean like watching movies and stuff like that. I mean like in their mannerisms and the way they um, carry themselves. They're part-time believers. And um, I'm just, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm like really writing up in the margins. So yes, um, this is a short book. It is only about 195 pages, so about 200 pages worth of reading. I could definitely read this in one day, but I'm probably gonna turn it into a two day reading vlog. It is currently 250, so I really just want to unbox something real quick because one of my sisters from YouTube, and I'm going to call you guys sisters because I don't want to call you guys subscribers, I just don't, but she is a sis in the DOI family. She contacted me and said that she wanted to send me something, and this was a couple days ago. And um, one thing I just want to let you guys know, I don't require that you send me anything. I'm not requiring that you guys donate, but you guys do donate and send me things, and I'm so grateful. So... I'm going to unbox it on camera for you guys. And it's pretty, yeah. So it came in this packaging, um, and her name is on it. It is Ciara. Um, so thank you so much, Ciara. I truly appreciate it. I'm so excited to get into this. So she sent me a message and said like she that she found something on life. Hold on. Let me open up the message first so I can get this right. We won't get it wrong. Um... She saw my September book haul and wanted to bless me with something and that she got it from Lifeway near her um, since the last few weeks and she just, she hoped I didn't have it already so she wanted to send it to me. This was on the 13th of October. It is now the 17th. So that was four days ago, okay? So I don't know what it is. I'm super excited and I didn't even go back to watch my September book haul. I probably should have gone back to watch that haul but I don't remember. So I don't know, but okay. It smells like something burning in my house, but it's not my house. I think it's the heaters that smell like that. But, um, okay, so we're gonna take it out, take it out, take it out, take it out. Okay, it's inside of this gold envelope, which it's not closed. So, okay, I'm actually gonna repurpose that. That is so cute. Thank you, Ciara, but it's a box. I'm not looking, I'm not looking. It's a box. 
Oh my god! You guys. Oh my, oh my gosh. Okay. So. I literally just did, like literally today, recorded a review for this Bible. And in the video, I was saying how I really just want to get another copy of it because the one I own is paperback and I don't want to mess it up. Now it makes sense what she was talking about. So my September book haul, if you haven't seen it, click the on the screen. I hauled the Bible that was gifted to me from um, my leaders at my ordination service. And um, they sent, they gave us a paperback copy of that Bible. And I really just wanted either a hardcover or a leather touch because I didn't want to mess up that Bible. That Bible is definitely a, a keepsake for me, so I don't want to mess it up. And I said I wanted to get either the hardcover or the leather touch. You guys, she got me the leather touch. Oh my God. Like, it's the Fisher of Men Bible. Um, by the time you see this video, that review should have already been up. You guys, the <laughs> Literally, I, I really wanted a leather touch of this or the hardcover because this Bible is so good and you will see it in the review. If you haven't seen the review, like I said, click the on the screen. Um, but she... <laughs> so I just threw the top on the floor. My bad. But um, it is so pretty. Oh, this gilded edges. Yes, I love good gilded edges. It's not gold and it's not silver. It's more pearlescent. It's not silver gilded edges, but, um, oh, it smells brand new. Oh my God, you guys, look at this. Isn't it so cute? And they have waves, like, oh, oh my gosh. Thank you, oh, Ciara. Thank you so much. I hope I'm saying your name right. If I'm not, I so apologize, but I hope I'm saying it right. But, oh my gosh, you guys. I am like, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her name in the book. In the Bible, like where it says I'm presented to by, I'm definitely gonna put her name. I'm gonna put today's date on it because thank you, thank you so much, Sierra. Like, I just I really wanted this Bible so bad, and you got it for me. And I wasn't expecting anybody to get it for me, honestly. I low key was going to contact the publishing company, low key, but um, I don't have to do that now. And I is this in the HCSB or the CSB? This is in the update. Oh my god, and it's in the updated. So the one I have is the HCSB copy in the paperback. This is in the updated CSB. So I uh, just uh, thank you so much. So um it's 255. I'm gonna go across the street now and pick up my son and come back to you guys with more information on um this book. I'm like just I feel so giddy and excited right now, so I definitely have to message her back. Hey guys, so I'm back in the house. It is now 3.49 p.m., same day, Thursday, October 17th. Um, I didn't say it at the beginning of the clip, I think, so I would obviously have the date on the screen. But um, I really didn't, I don't think I explained it well enough because I was like super excited about the package that I got. So what I'm going to do is explain what this book is about and um, things like that. And then I'm going to go and take you guys with me to make one of my favorite teas. Um, which is a pumpkin spice tea. <laughs> Sorry about that. My son bust through the door because he wanted my calculator. Um, I have one of those, like, cute girly calculators that have, like, a game, the little ball pin thing game on the back of it. So, yeah. But, um, yeah. So, we're gonna dive into this. So, quickly, on the back, like I said, this is biblical fiction about a guy named Simon. So, on the back, it says, A fictional account of Simon, a contemporary of Jesus, who was the last man to get a room at the inn in Bethlehem, which meant Joseph and Mary were turned away when they sought shelter. That night, unable to sleep, Simon witnesses the gathering of the nativity and wonders if the newborn child might be the promised Messiah he had heard rumors about in town. Simon begins a journey of faith and reflection as his life intersects with Jesus during the major milestones of his life and ministry. And then on the back, because this is an art copy, there are like three bullet points. So I'm going to read those. So it says that Simon visits many cities where Jesus ministered. He witnesses the Sermon on the Mount. He hears the parables and the testimonies and observes some of the miracles, all from a distance. His journey takes him through intellectual curiosity, disbelief, humility, sincere investigation, moments of inspiration, with the typical setbacks and victories of the process until he finally turns himself completely over to Christianity. The story celebrates the birth of baby Jesus and ends with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, making this an ideal book for both Christmas and Easter holidays. Cultural and historical accuracy of the story have been reviewed by experts in Roman period Palestine and Jewish culture. So that's what this book is about. And, um, yeah i have already read that portion of the book um this book is broken down into three is it three or four 
sections four parts if i'm not mistaken let me see yeah this book is broken down into four parts if you guys can see i already have all the individual parts kind of like marked off so i'm trying to at least get through part one before i leave because i do have dance rehearsal tonight with my sisters from church um we're gonna have rehearsal at the church for probably an hour so yes um i have read chapters one and two and like i said in um no, chapter one is really pretty much just getting to know who Simon is and then the introduction of Moses. Moses. Why did I just say Moses? The introduction of Joseph and Mary when they are trying to get into the end but can't. Um, and so we have that going on. And it pretty much deals with... Um, Simon basically kind of feels bad that there is no space for them because he obviously can see that Mary is pregnant. But at the same time... He just doesn't care and feels like he deserves the kind of space and relaxation that he found. So in chapter two is when he goes out for a walk and he happens to come upon all of the shepherds who are at this cave. And inside the cave, obviously, is Mary and Joseph with baby Jesus. And he is so awestruck that it is hilarious how awestruck he is. But it's really, really sad, honestly. Um, because... You know, his definition and mindset of what holy is are kind of like those things that are inside of a temple or those things that are like a, a priest are doing. He doesn't consider a normal man and woman and a baby being holy. And for me, I put that the simple things are more holy than the lavish and that holy is more than just an appearance. It's, it's more than what you say it is. Um, it, it's it, There's a lot more to just the word holy and being holy. So we have that. Um, then there's this thing where um, the Holy Spirit begins to intervene. And I know it's not the Holy Spirit because they didn't have the Holy Spirit at the time. So the Spirit of God is what I'm going to say. Um, began to intervene with Simon um, and was really trying to get him to go forward towards the cave to actually speak with Mary and Joseph. But he kept stopping himself from doing that. And I thought it was interesting because... He really is watching everything from afar and he feels the presence. He feels this calmness. Like it literally says that he feels this peace. And then it, then again, he starts to feel this comfort and this reassuring feeling. And that those thoughts of going to speak to Mary and Joseph were very persistent. And I'm just like, wow, it amazes me how the spirit of God is so prominent in someone's um, vicinity, yet they continue to push it away. And I know for me, that was the case with me. I could feel the, you know, the presence of God. I could feel the comfort and the peace, but I just kept denying myself. And even in this, it says, again, he felt the urge to approach the cage, the cage, the cave. And again, he denied himself. And then I said, why deny when you should oblige and obey? And that's something that I personally thought for myself was like, why did I run for so long when I could have just obeyed and things could have been easier for me? But you know, then at the end of that, it says how he felt like a strange loss when he walked away from the cave in the presence of, of Christ. And I, I, for me, I wrote that um, not being in the presence of God or Christ um, gives you this sense of loss. So I don't know. I just thought it was really, really interesting. And I mean, I was I was writing a whole bunch in here. Um, and then there's a part where it says that with practice skill, he pushed the troubling thoughts from his mind. And those thoughts were basically the spirit of God intervening and trying to um, get him to do something sort of like a conviction. But I underlined it in blue and said that it's sad that that's become normal to him, that it said that with practice skill. It's crazy how a lot of the times the Holy Spirit can um, sort of intervene and convict, of us, convict us of something. And we just pay it no mind. And we're so skilled at ignoring the Holy Spirit. So... You know, I just, I thought it was interesting. So I'm on chapter three as of now. Like I said, I haven't gotten far. Um, section two starts after page 47. So that's chapter 10, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's chapter 10. So I'm going to try to read from three to nine before I go. I have maybe an hour or two before my mom gets here. And then um, I think she's going to give me a ride to rehearsal. Prayerfully, don't feel like taking the train. So if she does give me a ride, I'll read some more in the car. But um, I'm going to take you guys with me right now to go make my favorite tea because everyone wants to know. Um, and the two teas that I like, really, really like are the Bigelow Pumpkin Spice as well as the Twinings Chai and French Vanilla. I had some of this this morning. Delicious. Um, super delicious. I mixed this one with the International Delight Sweet Cream Creamer. This one I mixed with the Pumpkin Spice Sweet Cream Creamer. So... Sorry if you guys hear my sister and my son. They're loud. This is a vlog. It is what it is. So let's go to the kitchen. Okay, so we're in the kitchen right now. And you're going to hear my sister and my son and my brother. So I apologize. But we're in the kitchen. And um, I'm just going to use these little cups. I bought like a stack of like 16 count cups that you can take. Purple um, coffee cups that you use or whatever. 
And again, I apologize that you hear my son. But I am going to now have my pumpkin spice tea. So let me grab two tea bags of that. Okay, so I turned the light on because it was a little dark in here. But yeah, um, so the big little pumpkin spice, hearty spice tea. This tea is so delicious. So I'll do two tea bags of that, okay? I have these little plastic cups you can get from the store. I have travel cups, but I don't want to use my travel cup. I just rather use this. I did have my other tea in here from earlier, so I just rinsed it out. So all I do is literally just pop it in the cups. Two tea bags. And get that in there. So again, we have two tea bags inside of the cup. I then use a Keurig just to make some hot water because we ain't got time to be boiling the water. So I normally do about eight ounces of water, but I'm gonna do six because I also want my creamer. So we're gonna do six and let that go. And I'm gonna grab the creamer. Okay, so you guys know I have to put on my creamer. So this is the Cold Stone International Delight Sweet Cream Creamer that I've been telling you guys about for forever. This stuff is amazing. It's like my new French vanilla creamer. So good. But um, I'm gonna use a hint of that mixed with this one, which is a pumpkin spice one. This one they only come out with during the holidays, which kind of sucks. So um, I did snag up four bottles of these. So this one is almost done. So yeah, so the water is done on that. I'm gonna grab a little mug because I always heat my creamer up before I put it in my tea. I don't like it to make my tea cold. So we're gonna do a lot more of that with a pinch of this just to mix that up. Um, then I'm just gonna heat it up for 30 seconds. I know it's a minute, but I'm gonna do 30 seconds. I do it in increments because I don't like um, one it to explode in the microwave that has happened before where I've heated something up for too much and it exploded. My son, no shirt. I'm sorry. We get ready to leave soon. Okay, so cup here. I have five packs of sugar and I literally just buy this, um, what is this, 100 count sugar packets from the Domino sugar brand. That's what I use. Um, it helps me to manage the sugar because if I have to actually pour the sugar in myself, I go a little overboard. So, two sugars. Pour it in. And there's no meticulous way. You just put the sugar in. <laughs> I just dropped that. Creamer just stopped. I heated it up for another 30 seconds um, off camera. So that just stopped. Ooh, I spilled some sugar. Did not mean to do that. I have these coffee stirrers that I got from Walmart a while ago. I have a large pack. I'm just going to use one to stir up the sugar inside. So, and again, I apologize if you hear my sibling and my son. So I'm going to do something a little extra today. A little extra. I am going to whisk my creamer so that it's frothy. So I have this, um, what is this called? Simple Taste Frother. Simple Taste. And I literally have the creamer here. I don't know, can you guys see? No, you can't see, it's not gonna work. But um, I'm just gonna whisk it. Give it a little bit of frothiness to it. Normally I do this if I'm drinking out of like a mug, but I don't know, I'm just, I feel like doing it today. So we are. Um, just a little, not a lot. I don't take out my tea bag if I'm making this tea or chai tea. I leave the tea bag in because I like it really, really strong. Because um, I try to dilute it. It's a weird thing. I try to dilute it, but I also want it stronger. So I just leave the tea bag there. Unless I need to reheat it. And then I just pour this inside. Trying to get the rest of that out. Trying to get the froth out. It's not trying to come out, but... Okay. You guys can see some of the froth on this spoon. I mean, on the stir. But... That is it. Let me clean my mess. Okay, so I have my tea. Very delicious. So good. A little hot, but really good. And now we're gonna go back to the room and get some reading done. Okay, so I'm back in the room. And um, like I said, I have my tea. Hopefully that was helpful. I'll do more um, kind of like vlog style videos, me showing you guys how I make my different type of hot drinks. 
because I love me some good coffee. Definitely want to show you guys again how I make my lavender um, coffee, my lavender vanilla coffee. That stuff is so good. But um, yeah, I need to put some lotion on my hands. They're a little dry. Take that off. But I'm also going to have a cupcake. Um, I love orange cupcakes. They're so, so delicious. This is so good. Um, it literally is orange flavored. It's frosted orange flavored cake with creamy filling. So it's a cupcake with orange frosting and it's so good. You probably have seen these, um, the regular vanilla ones with the yellow or the chocolate ones. And I think for around Valentine's Day, they also have, like, strawberry ones. And then they have some purple ones. They're, like, lavender, but they're vanilla flavored. But, um, yeah, my son, my mom, and I, we adore these things. So I'm going to eat one of these as well. That was a fail, but it's okay. We're going to work with it. We're going to work with it anyway. And, um, get a cupcake out. Or aren't they just like the cutest things ever? They're hostels. I love these. These are just bomb.com. Um, hey guys. Say hi. Hi. What's your name? Kristen McData Addison. What's your name? Kristen McData. <laughs> no. What's your first name? McElvin okay. Addison. That's your last name. Okay. How old are you? Five. And how I'm old about to be six. Okay. What's your favorite color? Orange, red, purple. Ooh, okay, what's your favorite number? Twelve. Okay, what's your favorite character? Who you like to watch? What's your favorite TV show? Uh, Monster. Monsters? So like, um, Hotel Transylvania and the other cartoon with the little kid monsters? Okay. What kind of toys you like to play with? Hot Wheel cars and my different cars, the tiny ones. And what else? You like to draw. Okay, so you're going to show other people how smart you are right now? I want you to spell I. I. Spell like. I. No. L. I. Mm-hmm. E K yeah E spell the T H E spell and A D mm -mm. N D spell it again and A D and D no you missing a letter A N D now, what's two plus two? <laughs> no, you gotta tell the people, they don't know. You gotta teach them, what's two plus two? You don't know? I got two already. Mm -hmm. I have to get two more. Mm -hmm. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four, four, okay, good. So, you going with me tonight to dance rehearsal? Uh huh. Cause I'm about to go to a rehearsal. To I'm about to go to see my friends at at the rehearsal. At church. And you like church? Yeah. You like God? Guess I've been with me. Okay, but do you love God? Yeah. You love Jesus? Yes. You love your Bibles? Yes. I love everything. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I'm about to draw something. Okay. I go show with one plus zero. So no. You need space here. Come back here. You even got space in this book anymore? Oh, it's right here. Okay, go ahead. He's going to show you guys his math skills. That's going to give you a negative. Don't you mean, you mean take away or add? Add. So you got to make the cross. Okay, so he wrote you for you guys one plus two. So, what is 1 plus 2? 1 plus 2. I got 1 already. Mm -hmm. Me 2 more. 3. Yes! Good job! So, go back out there in the living room now. Hey guys, so, um, it is currently 9 on 9, Friday morning. Um, I just got back in the house. I had to take my son to school a little bit early because I had to go run a quick errand. And I'm really tired. I had dance rehearsal last night, and it was pretty good. Um, we was able to finish the routine. Um, so we'll be dancing 
in two weeks. Two Sundays we'll be dancing. So yeah. I'm tired, but I did get through part one of this book, which is the last man at the end. And holy cow. <laughs> um I, I couldn't really annotate the way I wanted to, so I need to go back and obviously like annotate some things. But um I'm now at part two. Part two starts at page fifty. 49 so i've made it to there so on the sticky note um what i decided to do was every 50 or so pages or every 10 chapters i think is every 10 chapters or is it every five chapters between every five to ten chapters i have a sticky note especially at the beginning of like the next part so for this this was nine chapters part two begins i have a sticky note so i'm just going to write down my general thoughts of what happened in the first half of the book so that um when it's time for me to do my review i'm not trying to figure things out because I, i've noticed that when i try to write my reviews and because i read massive amount of books um my thoughts can get lost at times so even though i annotate i what i did was at beginning of every part so part two has one part three has a sticky note and then where's part four i'm trying to find part four. Oh, do i have a note sticky note thingy and then part four has one um but in between each of parts two and um i think it's just between parts two and four yeah in between part two and four because they're so massive i also have another sticky note to break it up in half so that i can write my general thoughts so that's what's gonna happen but i'm extremely cold it is really cold outside i'm not a cold type of weather girl i, I don't like cold weather I don't like hot weather. I don't like cold weather. I'm more of a spring, early summer, early fall before it gets too cold. Once it hits that like 50 degree weather, I'm just like, no. Well, no, I can't say that because I don't mind 50 degree weather in spring. I don't like 50 degree weather with massive amounts of wind. I don't do that. We're not winter type people. So yeah, I do need to fix and clean my room up. Um, I'm just going to show you guys those pile of clothes over there. Right there, you see that. I need to put all that up. Um, my t my son's little section is a little messy right now with his books and stuff. I don't feel like doing any of that, honestly. Like I'm, I, this this is me being real. Like I'm tired. We got home at ten something. Didn't go to bed until midnight because my son had to finish his homework. Um, so yeah. I'm tired. I'm I'm massively tired. But I'm gonna make coffee. So I have one more of these cups left. The little to-go disposable cups. I need to buy some more of these ASAP. I have a to-go cup from, like, Dunkin' Donuts. I don't feel like using that cup, though. I just, I don't know. I want to be able to throw it away. So, I was going to make some tea. Ooh. I was going to make some tea, but I'm going to make some coffee. I'm going to make my famous French vanilla coffee with lavender syrup because... I just, I'm in the mood for that. But um, before I do, I just want to give some more info about... Do I want to talk about this now or do I want to wait? I want to talk about it now. So, anyways. um, So, like I said, I got to chapter 3. Um, So, chapters 3 to 9 were interesting. So, chapter 3, he goes home. Um, Well, no. Chapter 3, he's still in Bethlehem at the place at the end with the guy... And him and the guy are talking about, um, you know, the whole prophecy concerning the king being born um, to save the Jews and whatnot. And this is at the time that Christ was born. He's in the cave. Everyone's in awe. Blah, blah, blah. And I don't mean to say blah, blah, blah rudely, but y'all yeah, know the story. So um, there was something that I really, really liked. In chapter four, um, Simon is beginning to realize how lackadaisy and how... Um, he was using his faith and his belief as a convenience for himself. So he speaks to this guy, um, the guy he was staying with at the end. He's like, okay, so I've been trying to remember something and I'm a bit embarrassed to ask you for your help. I'm afraid I will, I'm afraid it will say more about me than I care to share. So what the guy said was, we're all on a journey where I am and where you are does not matter. Only that I may help you in the decision you wish to travel. And I think that is so amazing. A lot of the times we judge people based on where we're all, we where we are in life, and this happens a lot with like mature Christians, um, the older Christians, and even some young Christians who are 
um, more mature in their faith. They tend to judge people from where they are in their walk. And it's like, you cannot judge somebody like that because you were there not long ago. You were also there struggling not long ago. So I like that he said it doesn't matter where you are because um, where I am and where you are really doesn't matter. It's really about you helping someone get to the next level in their faith, helping them get to the next step in their faith. So I just thought that was so good. Like, I, I marked it. I didn't write, like I said, no notes because we was in a car and my markings are a little crazy, but yeah. Um, then Simon was like, um, I am a Jew, but I don't keep your, keep our ways too diligently. And, um, I mark that in brown because sometimes I don't keep the ways of Christ a hundred percent. Like there are some times where I might pop a curse word out my mouth because, you know, I'm, I'm hanging out with old friends or when I might indulge in something that I shouldn't indulge in, knowing that I shouldn't indulge in it, but because it's a, uh, a, a kind of familiar thing, I end up slipping back. And, um, again, y'all know I'm transparent on this channel, so I try to be as transparent as possible. But there are some things where I have slipped back and, um, you know, I had to get myself back on track. Like, this is not of God. This is not of Christ. So I like that he says that I don't keep our ways too diligently because I don't think any Christian, I don't care how good of a Christian you claim you are, um, you have your moments. I don't care. Because everyone gets angry. Like, everybody gets angry, and everybody thinks negative thoughts about someone. I don't care what any... Like, it blows my mind when people say they never thought negatively about somebody, because it's like, have you honestly never negatively thought about somebody? Like, somebody pissed you off, or somebody hit you with something. I'm pretty sure if somebody hit you with a bat, you're going to think something negative. I'm I'm just saying, okay? So, you know, um, I have marked that. And then... As they kept, they kept conversing about the whole, um, you know, the baby possibly being the king and the messiah. But um, the guy was like, oh, no. Simon said, you know, he doesn't think that this baby is the king. So the guy is just, you know, he's like, well, I don't mean to offend you. And the guy said something really, really smart, which I'll get to in a second. But he said, I'm just curious why you are so sure this child is not the king. Is it that, is that so much more fantastic than saying parting of the Red Sea? How about Mana, Jericho? All these things are quite fantastic, are they not? The birth of a baby seems trivial compared to these miracles, and a baby must be born somewhere. Why not here? And um, for me, that made me put into perspective, like, a lot of people tend to argue that, you know, Christ was not the Messiah. But isn't that the miracle in that he was born in a manger, not in this lofty type of place, not with riches and funds. Like, he was brought low, raised high so that man could live. Um, I just think it's so amazing. And, like, the whole parting of the Red Sea, that was just unimaginable. Like, come on, you did it with a stick. You know, it was like he parted the Red Sea with a stick. Obviously, it was God's power, but it was just like, come on, you did that with a stick. The whole mana coming from the sky, that's insane. Like... The walls of Jericho coming down from shouting, but the fact that the Messiah was born in a manger, or in this aspect of the story, he was born in a cave. The guy is trying to figure out what, why can't um, Simon believe that? So, yeah, but what got me was that the guy said, if I was taken aback by insult, I would spend my life going backwards. And I said, wow. How many times are we offended by something and we spend our whole entire day getting irritated? Sometimes weeks, years, and months being irritated with that one offense. It's just like now you're going backwards. You can't move forward because now you're stuck in a standstill because somebody offended you. And that has happened with me before when people have offended me and I've held on to that for years and years and years. You know? So it just it made me think. Um, and then Simon goes back home to where he lives, um, cute little love scene or whatever, and his wife has their son, um, and then there was a scene in chapter 7 where, um, his wife was having, I guess, some birthing problems, and the midwife was starting to get frantic, so he went into prayer mode, and again, back earlier in, um, what was it, chapter 2 or chapter 1? In chapter one, he basically was talking about how he is um, driven in a manner of convenience by his faith. He'll pray if he needs to pray, if he, but he won't if he doesn't need intervention. So this, I, I, I marked it as sad because he literally was like praying out. And another thing that got me is his wife is a very devout Jew. Um, she fully believes in 
you know, God as Elohim. She believes that this baby is the Messiah. And he is starting to feel bad because he's just like, my wife is so devout, yet I'm not. My wife is so, so much of a believer, but he's not. And he doesn't know the scriptures as well as her. So um, in the prayer, he said, dear God, I'm not a good man and I do not know you, but my wife, you know her well. And I'm asking you if you would help her, whatever is wrong, would you bless her? Bless her, please. She is a good woman, such a better woman than I am. A man, I know you are all powerful and can do anything. Would you please protect her and our baby? Um, and then he didn't realize he was crying. And for me, I felt like, okay, that's like a heart-wrenching scene. Um, just because understanding Simon from the last few chapters is like, he only follows the codes and the laws when it's convenient for him. But you married a woman that is completely devout like she is a like he even calls her more devout than most so you know she's one of them extreme believers in the word um and it's interesting because you know the word tells us to not be unequally yoked um and in this sense i would kind of say they're somewhat unequally yoked because you know she lives by this to a t i mean he said he she had an altar with the the, the incense and all that for the sabbath and he didn't like that but um he respected the fact that she was a devout woman. And I also think that sometimes in a lot of marriages, men tend to get upset because their wives are a lot more um, aware of the word of God. They know the word of God. But I feel like it's essential for a wife to possibly be a little bit more in tune to the word of God because um, we're nurturers, we're caregivers. And in being that... Um, we tend to be slightly a little bit more level-headed than men. Um, so it's always good to have a wife that is really steeped in the word of God. So, you know, that's what I was thinking. Um, they had their son. And then at this point, um, they start to talk about, again, this baby possibly being the Messiah. His wife is so sure that this is the Messiah. And they started, she started quoting scripture and stuff like that. And then he said, this child, he is but a few months old and he seems to be changing everything. And it's crazy how God can take the littlest insignificant thing. And I'm not saying that the Christ, the, you know, the birth of Christ is insignificant. But I'm saying that the way that, that Simon said it is that this small thing, um, he's only a few months old. God can take the tiniest thing and make that change your entire life in an instance. And I feel like even though Christ was only a few months old, he was already changing the world. So... Going into chapter 9, we get this information about Herod and how he tried to kill off all the babies and things like that. And how Joseph was able to escape because God made it, made him aware and um, stuff like that. There was also a scene where there was a new star in the sky. I'm trying to figure out. I think it was in chapter 8. Yeah, in chapter 8, that's when they saw a new star in the sky. It was like the brightest, fullest star that they had. And um, it kind of scared people a bit, but it also brought like a peace and comfort. So that was pretty much what was going on. So, so far, I'm really enjoying this. Um, I'm 50 pages and it's really, really good. So the goal for today is to knock out part two, which is page 51 to 112. Um, I'm going to try to knock it out before my son's father's son. Oh my God, I always say son's father's. Why? He only has one father. Before my son's dad gets here. Um, but I'm going to take you guys with me to get some coffee, and then I'm going to hop on my bed. Okay, so I put my robe on. I'm a little cold. Um, when I say I'm cold, y'all, I'm cold. Like, I'm for real, for real cold. But um, I have my cup here ready to go. I'm going to put it over here by the Keurig. And um, I need to wash this cup. It's been sitting out for forever. This is my daughter. I've increased my... <laughs> I always keep one out in the kitchen. Um, but, yeah. So this morning, we're going to drink... Don't I have another one in here? No, I don't. Okay, I'm trying to grab it, you guys. So, um, I drink the Donut Shop um, Arabica ground coffee. I'm probably saying it wrong, but here's what it looks like. I have the Great Value version, the Walmart version, but I also drink the actual, like, Donut Shop brand version coffee. But we have this one, and then I also drink a few others. I drink the Cafe Bustello. My mom got me onto this. Um, we've been drinking this before they had the little K-Pods. And then I also have this, which isn't really coffee. It's more of, I would say a latte, but they can I don't know. But it's a Cafe Escapes in um, Cafe Carmel. 
I also drink the French vanilla one, but I'm just in a mood for like actual like strong coffee. So we're gonna go with um, this because this is actual coffee. This is espresso. I don't want an espresso. I just want coffee. So <laughs> we're gonna put that in, and I'm gonna do six ounces of um, the coffee. Okay, so my coffee's done. Great. Oh, coffee. Um, so I have the Tarani vanilla syrup. I prefer. French vanilla. I don't know. I just like the way French vanilla tastes. Um, this one is the caramel. Yes, yeah, the classic caramel. That's still good. So we are good with that. Um, I can't wait till we move and I can have like a real tea station because I don't like the way this is right now. I mean, I tried to, you know, do it up the best way I could, but um, sugar. I think I'm gonna go with six packs today because I'm a little extremely tired so that's two three six okay so I'm literally just popping my sugar in right now because we need sugar I was tired I wish I had another bagel I still got cream cheese. Ugh, I would totally have a bagel right now. Okay. I'm not going to actually use a Tarani. I'm going to use my favorite ones from Monin. Monin? Monin? I don't know how to pronounce this company. But, um. Okay, so all of my sugars are in. <laughs> so, Color Stone Creamer, International Delights, the sweet cream, you guys can see, this is so good. It is so creamy, so sweet, it literally tastes like the ice cream, like, if you have not had Cold Stone ice cream, I don't know where you at. But, okay, coffee stir. I'm debating if I want whipped cream or not, I don't think I do. Or maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Depends. So I'm just stirring up the sugar right now. And good, it's done. So good. So we're gonna froth with my little um, frother. Just get a little bit of froth going. So, and I'll show you guys the froth in a second. So grab a spoon. This is the froth. So I'm just gonna put that on top. Got that going. You guys can tell I'm tired. All right. I'm looking for the measurement spoons. One tablespoon. Okay, here we go. So I have a one tablespoon measuring spoon and a half tablespoon. So I'm going to go with French vanilla first. This is from um, Monin, Monin, don't know. I have their French vanilla syrup. I'm going to show you guys how low my lavender is right now. And I haven't had lavender as much because it's so low. But this is a lavender one, you guys. Yo, I am down to the core. Like, oh, this is so good if you mix it in with, like, lemonade and make a lavender lemonade. Oh, God. So good. Um... They also have strawberry, which I have done the strawberry before, you guys can see. I've used the strawberry. This is also good in your lemonade. Um, and then they have this one here, which I <laughs> don't use as much because it's very, very strong. I need to find the expiration dates on these, you guys. Let's see, neck bottle. Oh, there is an expiration date. <laughs> All the way at the top. Like, guys, the expiration date is way up here. I didn't know that, but um, you guys can see this vanilla. And they come pretty much full up here. I don't use this one as much because it really tastes like an actual like rose rose. Like a rose flower. Like you just pop the rose petal in your mouth. Very strong. So I'm going to try to figure out what I can do with this. I might try to mix it into a lemonade. Um, but they have blueberry. They have other types of flavors. I'll leave the website down below for you guys. It's really, really good. Um, I need to make another water. These expire in 2022. Okay. 
just you know i gotta check it does get sticky so i need to run hot water on on top so that i can loosen these up they get um stuck because it's a bit sticky obviously so i normally do a whole teaspoon of the lavender but the lavender is very strong and this basically one teaspoon i believe one teaspoon is good for 16 ounces but because i did um only six ounces and then i have maybe like eight ounces total in this cup i'm not gonna do a whole teaspoon of the lavender because that thing is strong <laughs> if you like at night i don't mind it because that's when i'm like really looking for something relaxing but i just use the one tablespoon for the vanilla sometimes i put two if i want it really really um sweet and vanilla -y. and i'm probably gonna use two today that's one uh oh two so literally just two tablespoons of that okay i think i'm going to use that too i don't know why i put that in there but okay so we have that going and again that was the french vanilla syrup so when you guys hear me say syrup this is what i'm talking about because i know some people might get confused on like what does she mean syrup that's what i'm talking about that doesn't go there okay and then i'm going to use half a tablespoon of this because I don't want it super oh my god that smells so good i'm a sucker for lavender so good but this is really bomb like if you want a lavender um type of like tea or if you want lavender lemonade oh my god for the summer this this was the oof, that was it for the summer um, okay mixing that up and let me taste Uh, I, maybe I'll just go with the full tablespoon of lavender. I just I really want strong lavender flavor. Okay. Um, and the last thing that I'm going to do is I have white chocolate syrup um, or white chocolate sauce from Tarani. Is this even open? Yes. I'm just going to douse it with white chocolate. <laughs> um, I literally don't have no qualms. I just pour it in there. I don't measure I just I pour it that is good on top of some like if you do whipped cream and you drizzle the sauce on top oh my gosh I'm not doing all that though because I'm just not in a mood <laughs> I'm really tired guys but um start that up close this up I need to clean out the Keurig but I don't feel like it right now so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna close it I'm gonna stick this over here I'll clean it before I leave to my fiance's house but um It's so good and it smells so sweet and creamy oh yeah i was missing that that white lavender i said white <laughs> that white chocolate sauce oh we are good to go we're gonna commence the reading my granola is over there i don't feel like getting it so banana muffin Let me get me some um some ambiance music going. So um I wrote my little note. I kind of wrapped up my page, but luckily this is just an arc, so I can get a hardcover of it. But um I wrote my thoughts so far from part one. I wrote that um Simon is a Jew that holds his beliefs out of convenience. His view is skewed, however, God has been working on drawing him nearer through an encounter with others and seeing the Savior. His heart begins to shift and his focus as well. I also went back and did some annotating. Oh, I didn't draw my arrow. But um I went back and did a quick little bit of annotating some notes within the pages so just on some of the things that i wrote um also the tabs i'm using i got them off of amazon i'll leave them linked down below um but it was that pack that i talked about in the last video oh my eye is itching it's like my lash line has really been itchy but um yeah um i got a, like this huge pack from amazon and these were one of the ones in there and i wasn't using them for the longest because i didn't know what to use them for they're super super thin um obviously you can use them to highlight if you wanted to um just like stick one across in your book but um i am actually using them i'm going to use them in my smaller like mass market paper size mass market size um books but um 
I could use these just to highlight if I wanted to just like stick it across something. I could use it to highlight. But I don't know. They're really cute and tiny. So, okay. So, on to part two. And I guess you guys can watch me read. Okay guys, so I read up to, I'm at chapter 16 now, so 13 to 15, I think that's what I read, I don't really remember, so 12 to 15 rather, um, and basically what I've written in my little note is that um, 
we see a Alexander. So first things first is at the beginning of chapter 12, there is another time skip. And um, they're doing a lot of excessive time skip. They skip from the birth to six years later to 12 years later, which I'm just like, bruh. What's, what's going on with these time skips? So I guess skipping way too much for me. But they literally did a 12 year, they did a six year skip, a 12 year skip, and now they're at the time where Alexander is about 30. And Alexander in Christ is about the same age, so he's also 30. Um, and they mentioned Jopa, which I put LOL because um, when I hear Jopa, I think of Jonah and how he tried to run away from God. Um, and then. At this part, we have Alexander and um, Simon. Alexander, his son, they're splitting up to make quicker sales. Um, and I'm loving the relationship they have as father and son. I think it's amazing. Um, and Alexander says some really smart things to his dad that kind of, it kind of irritates Simon. And Simon is at a, a, at a point in his belief and his faith or his walk with God where he's teetering between his own belief and what true faith is um so that's where we see him at and they separate and whatnot they come back together um but on simon's own travels he pretty much tries to avoid nazareth because he heard that that's where jesus is living so he's trying to again avoid and i don't get why you're avoiding him um they meet up at this guy named levi's house and immediately levi his wife abigail i think it is abigail and alexander simon's son they have this newfound belief in um, the Messiah, Christ. So they believe, and Alexander is a little bit afraid to speak to his father about it, but they speak about it, and, um, you know, Simon is just set in his ways and his own beliefs, and it kind of, like, hurts me. But, um, Alexander talks about John the Baptist and all the things that John the Baptist spoke, and then his, Alexander began to question his father, because it's that part where, um, John the Baptist was talking about how we need to care for the poor, give up some, get like if we have two coats or whatever, give up one to the other. So Alexander is like, well, father, we've had so many coats. We've seen many without coats and we have had plenty, but we have always shared what we, I'm sorry. He said, and father, we've seen many without a coat when we have had plenty, but have we always shared what we could? And then Simon immediately gets upset and gets defensive and says that Alexander, we have always been generous, talking about offering food. But then what Simon says kind of pisses me off. He says, but they have to deserve it. I will not hand something to a beggar who refused to work or to try to improve his own condition. And that was a smack in the face for me because I've seen people, like where I live, there are three or four I think there are about four, four, um, homeless people that live on my, like, live in my area, and you will see them every single day, like, they're up the block by the fast food restaurants all the time, and I remember when I first started seeing them, I was like, okay, cool, I would, you know, help out as I could when I had the funds to do so, give a burger or something like that, um, and when my son's father, like, we're in the drive through of McDonald's or something, we'll see those same people, they'll come to the car for change, he'll give change, but I used to get irritated because I'm like, you have a means to get out of your situation and your circumstance. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people are literally stuck, and that's okay. Um, but then there are some people that they have a means to get out of it. They can go into these programs, but a lot of them don't want to have to listen to rules and regulations. They want to live their lives. So I used to stop helping. Because I'm just like, you have a means to get out of the situation and you choose not to. So why should I give up my money? And I'm being I'm being as blunt as I can and honest with you guys. Like, I used to think that because I feel like if I know you have a means of getting out of this and you can easily go into a homeless shelter or something like that, but you don't. And some of them will admit that they don't want to listen to someone else's rules and regulations. Why should I help you? Right? Like, I feel like you don't deserve my help. But... What got me is that Alexander said to his father, he said, who decides if they deserve it? And at that point, I'm just like, wow. I don't deserve God's love. I don't deserve his mercy, his grace. I don't deserve his blessings. I don't deserve any of the promises. I don't deserve any of the things that he's doing in my life. I don't even deserve to be, be called an evangelist, honestly. But um, 
it's not about me being deserving of it. It was about my heart and God looked at my heart and I have to really start looking at these people with a different mindset because sometimes I'll help and sometimes I won't. And I, I often don't help nowadays because you hear so much on the news about these homeless people killing other people because they're not getting what they think they deserve. And it's just like, what do you think you deserve? And then on top of that, how can you know when someone else deserves something or not? So then what killed me is that, um, you know, when he asks his father who decides if they deserve it, Simon immediately starts yelling, I do. And I'm just like, you're such a fool. Like, I literally put such a fool because it's like, Simon, if you really think about your life from the beginning when Mary and Joseph came to the end and Mary was pregnant and had to give birth to Christ in a cave, do you deserve life? Like, <laughs> you basically was like, no, I, I'm going to stay here and let them just figure things out. It's their fault. Like... Do you deserve the kindness of God? Do you deserve that when you prayed to God, he answered your prayer and saved your wife and your son? Like, do you deserve it, Simon? No, I don't think so. So, you know, this book is really, like, ugh, gutting my heart. Um, And then Alexander again goes in to say that all I know is that I did not hear, give him your coat if you think he deserves it. And I think that's funny because a lot of people always say that, you know, they won't do something if they don't think someone deserves it but the scripture never talks about you thinking someone deserves it just do it you do it because it is the word of god you don't do it because you think someone deserves it and that even goes into like when you need to work or if you're like in ministry and you have to help out in ministry be it cleaning up cleaning the bathroom throwing out garbage or whatever do it it's not that you have to do it for recogni recognition or it's just this whole page was just filled with so much stuff and then Alexander goes on to say that, um, where is it, where is it, where is it, on the next page, I think it is, yeah, okay, so, what got me again is that there was another kind of Alexander being resolute in his words, he's like, Father, I would not be offended, I wish you did not think that, but I respect your right to think differently, most importantly, I would not change I'm sorry, he said, most importantly, it would not change what I believe. Again, I put resolute in his faith. Um, Simon begins to get annoyed. Then, he, well, after, okay, so after he said that, right? After Alexander said that, um, Simon started thinking about the guy that had told him before how his beliefs won't change what that man believed. And immediately there is a definite change in his, in his being. He begins to feel a desire to know more about Christ. Um, but then he starts to get frustrated again because Alexander asks, him, asks Simon some really good questions. So the first one he says, um, if you don't believe, if you don't believe it, meaning that Christ is the Messiah or whatever, um, is it because you believe something else? And if so, what is it that you believe and why? And this is Alexander. He's not being snooty. He's not being like sarcastic. He's asking a serious question. If you don't believe in Jesus being the Messiah, the true King, what do you believe? Because in this life, there's only two things to believe. God or not God. If you're not believing God, you're obviously believing the devil and um, or Satan or whatever you call it. But um, there's only two beings that you can believe in, right? So it's just like, which one do you believe? Um, and then he says, Father, don't you understand? I respect your right to think that I'm just asking you to give me one reason you believe it. And again, Simon gets irritated. And it's just a lot of Simon battling with himself to understand so then in chapter 14 um alexander's just like i'm helping you prepare to go to, to go back and sell and immediately simon feels some type of way he's like what do you mean help me um does this have to do with yesterday and what i just spoke about how they came to disagreement and alexander's like no jesus is back and he wants to go and hear from jesus and really learn so alexander has a real true like fervent hunger to know more and um you know, then Simon says, Alexander, I understand well. No, I do not understand, but I know it is important to you. But it, but is it more important than, and before, I love this, and before Simon could get the rest of his sentence out, Alexander is immediately like, it's important. It is, it's that important. So he's like, well, you don't know what I was going to say. He said, I don't need to know. Whatever you compare it to, this is more important. And then my thing was, how important is God to us? Like, are we so resolute in our beliefs and are we set in the fact that God is more important than anything in this world to us? Or 
do we compromise how important he is or put him on like a secondary scale you know um so then you know alexander's like father you know how much i love you and you know i would never try to hurt you i worried that telling you this would hurt you so if you understand nothing else though i wish you would understand this this is so important that i risk hurting you to do it and again my thing is are you willing to risk your relationships with people are you willing to risk your job for the sake of christ like are you willing to risk it all i mean alexander is risking it like he's just like dad I, I love you and all but um this is more important than anything including my relationship with you and i'm like am i that resolute in my beliefs and my faith in god you know so um simon immediately gets upset and he was like well this is so important to you you mean so he said no it's so important period it is important to everyone and to you and again i think this is amazing because alexander does not know jesus he has not met jesus himself but from hearing the word you know he has become so resolute in his faith and belief obviously they know much because um mara which is simon's wife is a very devout woman so she definitely trained her children well but you know after that simon just immediately just gets real real aggy and he he makes me so irritated. So 15, Simon is on his own and he starts reminiscing about the whole thing with the prophet Elijah challenging the priest of Baal and the whole um, having them cry out to their God and him crying out to God thing. So that was cool. But um, yeah, I put that Alexander has come to the faith. Um, he puts his being into knowing more about Jesus. Simon becomes pigheaded and set in his ways. He tries to hold to his beliefs. And there is a spark of interest in Simon, but he is afraid of things being unpredictable. Um, so, 82, 81 pages in. I'm loving this book. It's really, really good. Um, it's really short. So, I'm trying to enjoy it as much as possible. Because, again, I could fly through this if I wasn't making this vlog. But I really want to vlog my experience with this book. Um, I'm definitely going to finish it today. It's a short read. But probably not all of it on camera. But so far, this is, like, so good. I'm really going to try to finish all the way up into part three right now and then hopefully try to finish up to part four that way while i'm at my fiance's house i could finish part four and talk about it while they are away at practice because they do have practice today my son has his final practice for flag football since the game is tomorrow so they go to practice from five to seven i believe um and we're leaving my son gets out of school at three so i'm leaving here at three so i have maybe about an hour and a half with them and then they're leaving so i'm going to try to definitely finish this while i can over there so i can end this vlog but i definitely recommend this book it is so so good i think this came out on the 8th don't quote me though it'll be on the screen um but if i'm not mistaken this came out october 8th so you can definitely get your hands on a copy of this i'll leave a link down below to amazon this book is really really good and it really makes you think about things um i definitely want to get a hardcover copy of this book it is so so good so good so good i'm really enjoying it um it's not like emotional heartbreaking like my other books are which i kind of like that it's I don't want to say lighthearted because it's not, uh, not really lighthearted, but it's not as emotional, you know, as like my female characters be. Um, I really just like this being from a man's perspective, so I'm excited for this. Alright guys, so I'm back. Um, it is 106. I'll show you guys in a second. Um, 106. And I have read part 2. And, um, yeah, I read the rest of part two. And I don't know how I feel. I still loved the book. It's pretty much going to get like a 4.5, maybe a 4.75. Um, it could possibly get a five star. We'll see. I just have parts three and four to read. And part three is pretty much this many pages. So it's not a lot for part three. Um, so I'm probably going to read that before I head out. But, um, it's been really sad so far because Alexander and everyone is like, they believe that Jesus is the Messiah and everyone is like talking to Simon about it. But Simon is still stuck in his ways and doesn't believe that he's a Messiah and it's pissing me off because he doesn't believe he's a Messiah. So it's kind of like he's dealing with a, like an emotional battle right now. Um, he's remembering certain scriptures. Um, but what got me is that when he went back home, um, because I told you guys, I think I mentioned that Alexander had went his separate ways because he wanted to follow Jesus and speak more about it. So um, when Simon got back home, 
his entire family basically was like, okay, we've come to the faith. We believe that Jesus is the Messiah, but he's only, he's like the only oddball out. And then he had a conversation with his 10 year old son and his son is like, well, I hope you aren't mad. And he started crying and he's like, well, I don't want you to be angry. I don't want you to leave us because I guess some of the children in the area where they live, their fathers are leaving because they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And um, that was just so emotional and sad. And I was like, oh my God, why? Um, but yeah. And then Alexander comes back home and he's just like, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm going to Galilee. Um, and what got me was the part with Mara. So Mara is Simon's wife. And um, after the entire family has this conversation, Alexander says he's leaving home to go to Galilee to basically do the work with Christ. Um, you have Mara and what's his name? Simon having a whole conversation. So um, he said, I suppose you feel this is a good idea. So Mar was just like agreeing, like, this is what he wants to do. I'm not going to stop my son, blah, blah, blah. So she says, unless I am missing something, I do not think you have heard the same call. Simon then goes and says, no, I have not, not even close. So then Mara says, then our place is here together, meaning her, his younger son, Samuel, and his two daughters, which I don't remember their name, but they're 10 and no, they're 11 and 13 years old. I'm trying to look for their names. His daughters are... Miriam and Adina, they're 13 and 11 years old. So, um, he then, I guess he starts to feel bad because he knows his wife is like devout and all that. So he then says, but would, what would you do if it were not for me? So she says, if it were not for you, then I would be sad. I would not have these beautiful children. I would not have my comfortable home. I would not have this man as my husband who is strong in his values and dedicated to us. Then he goes, this is not what I mean. And she says, I know. And then she says, if you have not heard the call, then my place all our places are here together. So then it says Simon was surprised at what happened next. He broke down in tears in his he broke down in tears, his arms tight around Mara. He cried hard. Not a word passed between them, but he knew she understood it all. She just held him silently until it was time for evening prayers. And the next chapter is like two pages. But like, oh my god, I was just like, it's amazing to see this woman, Sarah I don't know why I'm saying Sarah. Mara is very um devout and she's like strong in her beliefs and simon is currently battling that but she never pushes her beliefs on simon she allows simon to come to the faith on his own and what i wrote at the end for my note um before chapter before part three is that um simon battles his simon battles with his belief as his entire family follows jesus without reservation and that mara loves god enough to not push simon to believe mara knows that god is the head but she also knows that her husband is ahead so she's not like pushing her beliefs on him she's just like okay if you don't believe i'm not going to force you to believe and i'm just going to let things um naturally take its course now i don't think that mara would ever compromise her beliefs because we know that she got a whole altar in her house and everything and she like she's devout her husband said it but you know, I just like seeing the dynamics within the family and um, just seeing Simon grow and come to the faith. It's really, really interesting. So I got to page 112. Um, so I'm definitely going to try to finish up the next portion. Probably not now. It's 111. I need to clean my room. So yeah, I'm going to put on some music, clean my room up, and I'll vlog probably later on after I finish this book. Um, again, last man at the end. Let me put my bookmark in here, obviously. That would be smart. So I'm at chapter 22. Um, I'm going to update my Goodreads, both of my accounts, too. But um, I have that much left. It's really, really good. I'm really, really enjoying this book so much. Um, a lot more than I thought. I knew I was going to enjoy biblical fiction, obviously. But um, I didn't think it was going to have such an impact on me so far. Um, and, you know, see my tabs. Love tabs. And I am really loving these little tiny tabs. They're so stinking cute. And I'm glad I found a use for them. So I did open up a new one to use the orange tabs. But, um... Yes, so I'm gonna get to cleaning and the next time I see you guys, hopefully I would have finished the book. Hey guys, so I'm at my son's father's house. Um, my son is down the block at his grandmother's house, his great grandmother's house rather, and um, my fiance just left to go get him because he has practice. It is now 527. Oh, 527. Um, I can show you guys. Oops, he said 527. 528 now. And um, I'm finally going to tackle the last half of this book, hopefully before they get back. So now, we're going to read. Um, I'm just pulling up one of my videos to watch. I'm 
But I did bring my new Bible. And you guys saw earlier and like the blog clip from yesterday. I got this gorgeous Bible from Ciara, which again, thank you so much, Ciara. Thank you. Um, I signed it. I put her name in it um, in the pre on the presentation page and stuff like that. But I did bring it because I did want to start highlighting and looking through this Bible. But um, yeah. Okay, here it is. I'm just going to my reading ambiance list right now. So. Let me show you guys the one that I listened to. Let me just fix the settings. <laughs> um, but yeah, here it is. And it's literally just wind chimes, birds, and the cracking from the fireplace. So let's get to reading. Okay guys, so right now it's 7.12, but I finished reading at 6.30. Um, I completed this book and, crazy, my son wants to get in the video, so sit on my lap. Yeah, I found uh -uh. a penny. That's not a penny, that's a dime. Let me talk I though. Got a dime. Okay, let me finish talking though. When I'm done, you can talk, okay? But, um, this was surprisingly really, really good. Um, this is based off of an actual biblical figure. Um, Simon, if you guys read the part where, um... Jesus had fell with the cross and then the Roman soldiers made him get made another man named Simon Wait. pick up the cross. Wait, Wait, give me a second. You dropped it on yourself. It's okay. I got it. But um yeah, it's that Simon. It's in Matthew 27 verse 32. It talks about Simon. So, this took that scripture and gave that man a whole kind of story from beginning to end and it was very powerful very amazing i will have a dedicated book review for this because it is really good i'm not gonna keep talking too long because i gotta go downstairs and cook some dinner but um yeah this this the last man at the end i highly highly recommend it again i think it's already out and if it's not out by the time you watch this video it have already been out like i said it's the 18th right now of october as i'm making this but um this was really really good it's definitely a one sitter but i would say take it in parts Thank you. Stop doing that. Well, the show the puppet. Okay, give me a second. Okay, I got what's these? They can't answer you. Say Mike and Ike's. Mike and Ike's. Okay. <laughs> I buy that to do it so bad. Okay, give me give mommy a second, okay? Okay, but um, this was really really good, and I enjoyed it. It was really good. Um, but I'm gonna end the vlog here. As you can see, I might when I get home tomorrow, I may make another clip. Well, I'm gonna just make another clip for tomorrow. Um, but just so you guys know, I finished this on the 18th, so it was a two-day reading vlog, and I definitely give this a five-star rating. So I'll come back in a later clip to talk with you guys further. Morning, guys. So I'm out here in this dang cold air. It is 8:38 in the morning on the 19th. It's Saturday. You guys can see that it is Saturday. Um, I think it was like 39 degrees this morning. Let me check. It's 41 now. It is 39 damn degrees out here. My son has a flag football game. It was supposed to be the last game, the championship, but they stretched it out. So he's playing a team today and the championship is next week, which I won't be able to make because I'll be with my mom at a women's event or working on doing my um, sister's makeup for her performance. Um, hold on. Sorry, I just wanted to come on and end this vlog for the book, The Last Man at the End. I 
really really enjoyed it um it was really really good you know at first i thought it was just a random story about a guy named simon oh my gosh i think my hair is like this because i had the hood on my head but um at first i thought it was like a random story about a guy named simon who just you know was the last man at the end but i liked how they made it about the simon that helped jesus carry the cross to his crucifixion that was amazing and that really made me love the book even more because i originally was going to give it a 4.5 4.75 but after reading it and it got to that portion i was like wait is this really the man and i looked up the scripture and it came from matthew 27 32 so um i enjoyed it i enjoyed the journey with simon from the birth of christ to the death of christ and the resurrection um i enjoyed learning more about his family and seeing how his family was so resolute in their faith and belief but how he wasn't and i liked how they didn't push him or force him to um have the faith um pretty much and i really loved mara as a wife she was phenomenal she was very devout she was a, you know a heavy believer she did the things of god but she never forced it upon her husband and i like that she didn't overstep her boundaries she understood that her husband was the head even though she knew that god was the head she still understood that her husband was the head of the household and she didn't force anything onto him so i definitely enjoyed this book it was phenomenal i don't have the book on me right now i left it in the house but um it was really really good so i'm gonna sit in this car and i'm currently reading an ebook right now it's called angel mage um so far i'm not liking this book it is a fantasy it's a young adult fantasy that i have to read for my other book blog um i'm only two percent of the way in this review is due next week monday and i'm not enjoying it so far um i do have other books that i need to read so i'm probably gonna put this on a back burner until the weekend because i'm not enjoying it it's very heavy on like the information information overload but um yeah so i think i'm gonna just pick this book up right here which is my ya fantasy novel that i was reading because <sighs> i have to read the first and second book before i can get to the third book and the third book is the book that i have to review and isn't this so cute you guys reading is the bubbles and it's ariel i printed out a bunch of these disney kind of like bookmarks and then um I printed them on regular paper I think it was and then I laminated them this one is a little bit messed up because I was running low on ink and still didn't care so I'm gonna have to probably reprint this but um so cute but yeah so that's what's going on I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see hold on yeah you're not gonna be able to see but I am at the school that they're playing at and um yeah so I'm gonna end this vlog here I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I definitely recommend you guys pick up this book. It is so good. Um, I am going to contact the publishing, the, the, the publicist that I communicate with, with the Shadow Mountain Publication Company to see if she could send me a hardcover because I definitely, 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 I love my arc, but I damaged my arc up with my sticky notes. So I definitely want a hardcover to reread down the line. Um, but yeah, that is it for this vlog. I'll see you guys in the next reading vlog. Bye. Mm -hmm.